love to see your blues organist or your hockey organist try something like that. And they do it all the time, too. Check it out. There we go. For everyone listening on the podcast forums, um, for the St. Louis Blues home games, we have an organist that will play other hits, big music from rock and metal, on the organ between plays in the game. So, yeah. Worth pointing out. Welcome back to the podcast, The Rock Weekly Podcast that talks about news in the world of rock, metal, alternative, and everything in between. My name is Luke, host of the YouTube channel Rock. Thank you for tuning in. I am flying solo tonight on what is now the last of podcast of the year. This is going to be covering the best and worst of 2021. There is a lot to cover. A lot. And I am not going to be able to cover everything. So if there's something I miss, I'm going to say it right off the bat. Listen, guys, I get it, and I know people will be upset if I don't cover their favorite thing, but that's just how it's going to have to be. So, for 2021, these best of the year episodes, they're a little bit more free form. They're a bit more off the cuff. I don't go in any order, normally. I don't do good, bad, good, bad, or all the good, then all the bad, or reverse. It's just whatever comes off the top of our heads. And now, since I'm flying this one solo, I'm going to be doing this one with the audience. So... For everyone listening on chat right now, watching, thank you guys again for tuning in. I want your opinions also as I go through the list of everything that I've been taking a look at for some of the biggest things for what's happened in 2021. Keep in mind, 2021 was roughly seven years long. I'm sure it felt that way. I could ask a lot of people what they thought was 2021 better than 2020. I don't know. Was it worse than 2020? No, I would argue that one. They're not, it's not worse than 2020. However, I would be saying this. I can't stress enough that 2021 was memorable in many ways. We saw uh, the world try to reopen back up, both in terms of live music and just in terms in general, just working again. And then as 2021 comes to a close, so do many other uh, businesses, organizations, communities, also shutting down again with a new variant. So, what does that mean? Well, we're going to find out, I guess. We're going to see what comes for spring of 2022. I'm choosing to stay optimistic. Uh, Omicron is brutal. And there are now recorded deaths for Omicron. But at the same time, now that so many vaccines are out and people are aware of it and aware of how it works, and hopefully it'll be a little bit better. I hope that everyone is safe, and I know before we go off of the music news and stuff, I'm just giving my well-wishing to everyone. Here's hoping that 2022, we all succeed in what we're trying to accomplish. No matter how big or how small, whatever we're trying to make of ourselves in 2022, that's what I want. I want us to succeed and make progress. Whether that's in January, whether that's by the end of the year, whatever the big things or little things are, that's what I want to see. Now, what I've done, and <laughs> this could be setting me up big time for uh, lots and lots of issues as I try to get this going. Let me turn off the uh, center monitor right now. Da -da -da -da. Bam. So what I've done is I've gone back in time a little bit over 2021 while giving a little cheat sheet of all the things that have happened this year. And we had a lot. So I'm looking at the podcast that we've done here, the podcast that rocks, looking at highlight notes and things like that, if it'll work, and just seeing, wow, a lot of things have happened. A whole lot. A whole lot. And it's going to be interesting to find out what all happened. And for many people, I think we've all forgotten a ton. So without further ado, let's cut right into it as I pull up everything for the podcast that rocked in 2021. The best and the worst. There was a lot of both. And man, oh man. Uh, I think we're all a little bit wiser and a little bit smarter for surviving this crazy, crazy year. Keep in mind, I'll just give a little flashback right now. Did you guys remember that back in January of this year was when one of our favorite um, brainwashed Super right-wing conspiracy nutjobs Tommy Vex left Bad Wolves. 
That was this year in 2021. That happened literally right at the start of almost one full year ago. We talked about that on the podcast for January 13th. Ugh. Bad Wolf's doing much better now. They have a song charting on Billboard's top 10 for the week and things like that. Lifeline did really well. Their new album people are enjoying from what I understand. Their new singer is fitting like a glove. I'm curious to see what the new singer is going to be like live. I'm sure it'll be fine because he has such a huge presence and history of working himself, DL, from Acacia Strain. But, uh, yeah. Bad Wolves are going to be doing okay. <laughs> Tommy Vexed? Not so sure. He has lost several lawsuits and settlement had to settle for some of them, things like that. He tried to make his own lawsuits that did not go well. He tried to make his own name Tom uh, Tommy Vexed and, and the Bat Wolves, B eight sign D W zero L V three S in Leet Speak. Boy, I remember that podcast. Boy, is that not legal? Um, there a lot of mistakes happen there. And yes, everyone's talking the podcast right now. Uh, yeah, he uh, he just went off the deep end. And I stand by it. I'll say it again. Doc Coyle was the pinnacle of class in how to handle that whole mess. And he was understandably upset. He continued to show how much on a higher tier and of just intelligence and professionalism. And knowing how to do that. Yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> uh, and someone in the chat just quoted Crash Thompson. We lived. Yeah, oh yeah. Crash had a rough year too. I had a rough year. Mark's having a brutal year right now. Uh, everyone had a rough year. Rock Coliseum wise, Gretchen and I, we had stuff happen. You know, it, it just is what it is. So, ugh. it's one of those things. But yeah, keep up the good work for Bad Wolves. They'll be going on tour, if I'm correct, with Papa Roach and Hollywood Undead. I'm pretty sure that's the tour that's happening, supposed to happen in the beginning of 2022. We'll be going from there. Also, did you remember that Weezer released two albums this year? I think that's so wild that it was this year that Weezer um, released two albums, OK Human, and then the long-awaited Van Weezer, which was delayed for over a year. I remember thinking OK Human was interesting, really interesting, because you know what? OK Human was something very different and it was properly dated. It was meant to be a timestamp of everything. And yes, I'll get to that finally, a username you can trust. That is a great suggestion in the Twitch channel. But Weezer actually tried to do something different with OK Human, and it worked. Rivers really steps out, stepped out of the box there for that. I enjoy that album. Van Weezer was eh. It was not awful. It was not miserable. It was just eh. Fine. Whatever. I'll take meh Weezer over bad Weezer any day. So, I just think, I remember hearing about that. It's like, oh yeah, both of those things happened this year. Other music stuff. It was back in February of 2021 where all the serious allegations towards Marilyn Manson started coming out, like getting compiled and much other information started being gathered and uh, appropriately dived into by the FBI and LAPD which is still ongoing. Remember how it was just over a month ago, or not even over a month ago, that Meryl Manson's house was raided. Man. Yeah, we're going to hear more about that. Don't think that's going anywhere because from what I understand, Meryl Manson's still planning on making appearances for OzFest at the end of the year for the New Year's celebration. So, yeah. Uh, we still got much, much more. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Also, in 2021... We saw a lot of bands uh, return with new music after several years. A lot of good bands that we really enjoy. Gojira, Chevelle. Episode back in March, we talked about one of the episodes being Chevelle versus A Day to Remember. Who is going to deliver for their fans? I have seen many, many people say they love Chevelle's new album, Neurotias, or Neurotias, however you want to pronounce the acronym. I really enjoyed it too. I admit I did not enjoy it as much as many other people, but I still really enjoyed a lot of the songs on there. Better remember not so much. Um, that 16-month album, uh, that delay for an album that people were very uneasy about hearing in full, proved everyone true. And yeah, a song like FYM really proves the day to remember kind of sold out a bit. And I say this as a day to remember fan. I am a fan of a day to remember. Absolutely, completely love it. I still love a day to remember. 
They're going through some rough times. 2021 was a rough time for a day to remember. Boy, that is the hard truth. Um, they're down a member. Rightfully so. They're uh, going to have to figure out touring and stuff. They have a big tour planned, or as of now, in 2022, supporting Bring Me the Horizon over in Europe, which I think is awesome. And I'm definitely going to figure out how I address a day to remember going forward. And someone just made a great suggestion in the chat. I wish I had a mod up right now, but I am definitely going to make a poll out of this. Who I'm going to do a live poll right now in Twitch. Whose album was more disappointing? Uh, I wish I had a mod for that could join me for the live streams. Da -da, a day to remember or the offspring. Because that gets to our next thing. The offspring after nine years, nightmarish label conditions, lawsuits, legal allegations, uh, agreements, losing members, gaining members. The offspring finally returned with a new album. Whew, it was not good. It was... Uh, it, it was the cor cornball, bad humor, bad jokes, re-recording their own music, and then royalty-free old songs in the Hall of the Mountain King. The poll in the Twitch chat right now, uh, sub votes count double, by the way. A Day to Remember versus The Offspring. Whose album was more disappointing in 2021? <laughs> it doesn't matter who wins this poll, because we all lose. So... And by the way, I'm still a fan of both bands, but man, oh man, uh, not what we expected. And that's not to say that a lot of other bands that came, like, waited a long time since their last album wasn't worth the wait. Gojira, their first album since 2016, really delivered. I loved. A lot of people loved Mastodon's latest album, the double album, Hushed and Grim. I really enjoyed it too. That was their first since 2017. Tons of bands came back used the quarantine time, and actually came out with something people enjoy. And we still have material coming out of that as well, which I think is awesome. I don't know how much longer it's going to be before we get more material for a lot of these bands. I know Gretchen's favorite band, Shinedown, has their first new single coming out in January. Iron Maiden, someone just said in chat, that's another one. We got another Iron Maiden album after so long, you know? If that's not indicative, Halloween... Whoever thought we'd get a new Halloween album? And it was good. <laughs> Guys, we had a lot of surprises in music and the heavier side, rock, alternative, metal. Coldplay had a new album. And that's all we need to say about it. Uh, as someone who was such a diehard Coldplay fan of the 2000s output, the 2010s output really failed to deliver. And now the 2020s output, ee, I don't know. Man, oh man. I don't know where they're going to go. I remember Chris Martin said in a quote, quote Coldplay might be done make, making music together around 2025. After you release an album like you did this year, it sounds like you already stopped. And it wasn't the worst of the year. It wasn't the worst thing ever. But man, oh man, you could just tell. It's not close to the quality and care they used to put into their music. So there's so much new stuff still coming that I can't help. But uh wince at when i see the list on uh rate uh music critic and rate your music and wikipedia for album releases because there's so much moving on though we saw many 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 um right-wing musicians get very butthurt and angry and try to rage against the liberal machine so yeah kid rock aaron lewis and a few others really got upset with how this country is, the people in it, how it's run. They only care about themselves, though. If you really listen to those songs by Aaron Lewis and Kid Rock, you'll notice a theme. It's all about themselves. Them, Aaron Lewis. Him, Kid Rock, you know? It's not about the country and how we can help each other and how we can do something to make everything better for everyone. It's more, I hate it, I hate it here, wah, wah, wah. You all suck, but I'm a man. I know what I'm talking about. Although with Aaron Lewis, it'd be a lot more drunk. And with Kid Rock, it'd be with a lot more profanity and stupid sayings. Man. Ugh. By the way, the poll ended. In a close vote, 56% to 44%, people are saying 
A Day to Remember's album was just a bit more disappointing than The Offsprings. And I get the argument, too. I think I'm, on, I'm in the same boat. But man, oh man. Yowza. <laughs> it was rough. We then go on, like there's some other big names and big albums that came out. I thought we gave Aaron Lewis to country music. Well, apparently he's still floating around because we are potentially getting new state music. They keep threatening us with that. So who knows? Another band that came back after a few years away and really did a good job. Rise Against. Nowhere Generation. Charted well. Still getting airplay. Still getting singles rotation. Had a killer headline tour that did really well. I am biased just because, one, that was the first concert I actually shot as a photographer post-pandemic here in St. Louis, Missouri. And also, Rise Against really upped their writing. They, Tim McElrath had that fire again. <laughs> Butt hurt baby boy rock. Kid Rock and Aaron Lewis. Yeah, well. Rise Against on the opposite side of the political spectrum. Think about it this way, what I'm talking about, too. Kid Rock and Aaron Lewis are singing about their own feelings and how their butt hurts, and how they're upset things aren't going their way, crabby old men. Meanwhile, Tim McElrath and company are singing about the generation, the woes of society, what things can make things better. How can we get out of this? There's a very big total difference in attitude and how things are delivered that way. Ugh. I don't know. I always think about that. And Nowhere Generation, I... That was my least favorite song from the album, and I still am fine with it. And the other songs are getting still getting airplay now, too. That makes me happy. Like, there's charting still. And I'm going to post the new video coming up in a few days, the top 10 Billboard mainstream rock songs of 2021, an actual video on the main channel for rocks. Rise Against is one of them, as we talked about last week. And good for them. They earned it. They didn't phone it in, and they could have, and they still want to have their strong fan base. They did just fine, and I think that is awful. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We saw another return that I know many, many people did not expect to happen. And even that was marred a little bit because of pandemic. Mudvayne returned for the first time in a decade, in over a decade, if I'm correct, to play live. They played live at DWP festivals. I know some of the members did get, the, uh, get sick and they had to cancel a couple dates. But still, guys, Mudvayne's back. They're having select dates. They have already have a few scheduled for 2022. That's crazy to me. Chad Gray and everybody else are back together. There's footage of them playing. I know it was an incarceration and other things like that. Guys, people loved it. I don't know if we're going to expect new music. I'd be willing to bet, yes, we are. But man, oh man, I just think that's awesome. Mudvayne is actually back. So we're going to see how that turns out. And then we get to arguably one of the biggest uh, versus battles we've had in the year. Okay, it was, oh boy. And I see, oh, okay, before we get to that one, another one that was suggested. Another album after many years that was disappointing, Evanescence. First full new album in 10 years. Not reimagined stuff, not acoustic sessions. New material front to back in over 10 years from Evanescence, Amy Lee and company. They brought it to the table and we many people collectively said, oh, it was that collective disappointment. I wish, I wish it would have been better mixed and produced better and we could have enjoyed it a bit more because man, oh man, that was not worth a 10 year wait. And I say that as an Evanescence fan too. And if you ever see Evanescence live, go see Evanescence live. They're great. A.B. Lee still spins around like a goth hurricane as she was quoted in Music Night many, year, many, many months ago. Man. But then we get to the biggest versus battle of the year. The one that undeniably had all the media outlets upset that made national news. Corey Taylor versus Machine Gun Kelly. When Machine Gun Kelly was very upset and started taking shots at uh, Riot Fest in Chicago... To a crowd full of people going, huh? And there was much footage and many people confirming that people were leaving Machine Gun Kelly's set to go see Slipknot at the end of that night. Machine Gun Kelly did great on his tour, selling out venues. They sold out smaller, mid-sized amphitheaters. You can't say the man didn't have success this year. He totally did. And his cringy, giant prescription bottle stands that he had on stage... And trying to dig deep and take shots at Corey Taylor. 
And Corey Taylor made the biggest backhand slap to Corey or to Machine Gun Kelly by showing the emails proving why Machine Gun Kelly was butthurt. Corey Taylor pretty much dropped it all and said, here's the reason why. Here's his own words. Here's my words. Shut up, Kelly. And that was the end of it. Machine Gun Kelly did not look good in the second half of this year after he went up against Corey Taylor, especially when he was getting booed out of the building at major DWP festivals, including Louder Than Life, where literally people were booing through the entire set. Machine Gun Kelly got upset and tried to punch people in the front row that were already being held down by security. It was a big mess all around. Big mess all around. Yeah. Um, oddly enough, Machine Gun Kelly and Travis Barker promised Born With Horns to come out in 2021. Didn't happen. Unless they're planning for a Hail Mary to get in the next couple days. Hope not. I really hope not. But we'll expect that in 2022. They already got the mashing tattoos to prove it. for Born With Horns. Fun fact, John from ARTV confirmed it too, in case you missed this episode. Um, yeah, uh, John said that the original album title was called Born Horny, but the label said no, and they thought better of it, so they went Born With Horns. And here we are. Here we are. Boy, oh boy, we're going to find out what happens in 2022 with Machine Gun Kelly, because I can't imagine festivals are going to want him now, um, rock and metal festivals. The multi-genre festival still will. The Heat performed really well at Austin City Limits. He had a big crowd for him there. They did. So you can't say he doesn't have a fan base. He has those kids eating out of his hand. Which is much creepier if you've been following Machine Gun Kelly. Yikes. So. Moving on quickly from Machine Gun Kelly and his attempt to be smart when... Ugh. Kid Rock also had some interesting things happen to him this year when he promised that next year would have a 30-track album with full world tour to support it. And that is also coming with the news that his restaurants are not doing that well. He's a, I said they're regretting the past that he's a failing restaurateur. Yeah, uh, if you're not familiar, Kid Rock's Bar, the biggest story that came out in May, a drunk, belligerent Kid Rock fan went to one of his restaurants in Tennessee and started slinging around his colostomy bag at police officers. A couple months later, Kid Rock was drunk at that same bar, dropping many a homophobic slur and then not apologizing for it and just doubling down on Twitter the next day. Yeah, Kid Rock still has fans. He always will. Someone in the chat! Kid Colostomy? I do not think that's a catchy name. No. Oh, goodness. Hard no. Kid Colostomy? Man, if ever is the nickname you don't want in high school, yowza. Kid Colostomy over there, no, he sits at his own table for obvious reasons. Gross. <laughs> we also saw many more um, people getting called out for behavior. One thing I did not think I would see end the way it did, David Ellison out of Megadeth. After all the allegations of him proving them texting back and forth, cheating on his wife, them having to confirm and prove that he wasn't doing it with a 17-year-old. No, no. She was of age, but he's still a creep. And yeah, David Ellison, longtime bassist for most of Megadeth's tenure, gone. That I thought was crazy too. I saw Megadeth this year also on that really well-selling tour with co-headlining tour, Megadeth and Lamb of God. It was a great tour with Trivium. And yeah, Megadeth played fine. I mean, Me I mean, Dave Mustaine's guitarist first. He's still shredding like it's nobody's business. The big amphitheater I, shot, I saw the show at and shot at did well. Totally did. Ugh. This was also the year that we got the celebration of the 30 years of Metallica's Black Album. I'm sure it sold another platinum, a million albums this year. It's good, another platinum certification. And with that, we got that massive blacklist, over 50 cover songs from every artist you can think of, and a bunch of others that you never would have expected to do well. We heard bands from everyone from Ghost, to Biffy Clyro, to Pup, uh, to Phoebe Bridgers, you name them, they were on there. Not all are winners, I'm not going to defend the whole thing because some of them are just weird for the sake of being weird, 
Weezer was inexcusably bad on that one. Or not even bad, just shameless on that one, trying to shove in their own chord on there. However, there were some good ones on there too. It is worth kind of picking and choosing your favorite ones because there's many ones on there that are quite good. So, there's totally so many more that can go on for there. And also, as we keep going on, we lost a lot of musicians too. This was the year that Joey Jordison died from Slipknot. That was back in July. I was a shock. Way too soon. Should not have gone out the way he did. So so fast. And that's a rough one because he really was one of metal's greatest drummers. Just how ferocious and fast he could be. When Metallica, when Lars Ulrich from Metallica at a festival couldn't play and they asked Joey to come in and fill in for Metallica at the drum set, you know you made it. You know you stand out above the rest. I know people are going to make a joke about Lars, but that's not what the point is. The point is of how good Joey Jordanson was, and he will be missed, no matter who he's playing for or what he's doing. He's up there with Paul right now, waiting for his friends to return with him. So, rest in peace to many musicians. Also today, I am aware of the news, it's the 28th. Uh, the NFL lost a legend. John Madden passed away at 85. For Since he was so far past my time, obviously, I, I was... He was done playing even when I when I was born. All the Madden games, the football kit, football games that everyone loves to play. Boy, that series is tanked, and it's not his fault. But that's a franchise. John Madden, one of the most famous uh, coaches, and then also just in general commentators for decades. If you ever want a fun trip, go on YouTube, look up best of John Madden commentary. For good and bad reasons, you'll laugh your head off. Because man, oh man, that guy. He was one of a kind with his verbiage. I know I have problems like explaining my analogies every now and then. Man, oh man, this guy was just bon just on his own for some times. Oh yeah, I had several Madden games growing up too. From PlayStation 1 to like PlayStation 3, I had several different games throughout the series. I mean, that's just how it was. Everyone did. And speaking of comebacks, we had a comeback that had tons of hype. They kind of delivered to their fans, and now they're fading away again. Limp Biscuit. Who would have thought that Limp Biscuit and Fred Durst would have come back to uh, Lollapal Lollapalooza, performed, had a single, surprised everyone with an album called Limp Biscuit Still Sucks. They're in on the joke. It was better than their last three albums combined, which is definitely not great. But the album itself was pff, tolerable. It wasn't embarrassingly, shockingly disgusting. Limp Bizkit tried to go on their headline tour. Uh, pandemic got in the way of that. They had to cancel for a lot of the dates. Don't know if Limp Bizkit is going to come back in 2022. We're waiting, but man, it's just like such a high buzz and then just peter out really quickly. Limp Bizkit. It's weird to think about that now because at the end of 2021, no one's talking about Limp Bizkit that much anymore as they were in fall a couple months ago. Uh, yes, good question in the chat. Was it better than anything on my worst list, right? Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah. The li latest Limp Bizkit album, again, was not the worst thing ever by a long shot. No. It wasn't good, I wouldn't say, but it definitely wasn't miserable or bad. There was some good musicianship on there behind Fred Durst again. And also, Fred Durst wasn't nearly as cringy. Also, and I said this before, I like him working with the fake wig and looking like the dad bod type stuff. I think that's a little bit better. He's rolling with it. <laughs> Limp Bizkit album is good for their standards. That is not that bad of a way to say it. There you go. <laughs> Hope Limp Bizkit doesn't come back next year. Don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. Well, if they go on tour, I don't know if they'll go on tour or not because they tried this year. That's not working out. We don't know what's going to happen. So we'll just have to like wait and see what happens with that. So we also saw... <laughs> Speaking of raging against the liberal machine, which we talked about earlier, a man of God on a war path against masks and the media, John Cooper of Skillet doubling and tripling down on the evils of society of the pandemic, wearing a mask as theater, and the Grammy uh, performances are like watching Hitler. John Cooper had a lot to say in 2021. A lot. By the way, I saw Skillet live this year. They could still play. They could still perform. They know how to put on a good show. 
Don't I don't think I want to get in a conversation with the man ever again. That man went. Bo- I feel like John Cooper is nice guy brainwashed by the media. I feel like a Tommy Vext was always a little off and out there and never fully with it, you know, a little bit too crazy and unstable. There's a big difference between the two, you know. Aaron Lewis is just crabby Uncle Aaron. I think he got more bought up into the politics side, more vocal, just because he's a bitter old man. And the older and more bitter you get, the more angry you get about politics and buying into uh, (laughs) the right wing news. And man, oh man, when in your big country song about am I the only one, when you're explaining how you come from the wealthiest part of Massachusetts, asking if you're the only one and trying to relate to the South, it doesn't really work out that well. Uh, Skillet's going to have new material, though. Also, some a band that was still performing, still trying to tour, and had a rough year this year, and they're still working through it. Corn, Corn had a headline tour. They have another headline tour scheduled for 2022. A killer headline tour. Corn, Chevelle, Code Orange. I love that lineup, guys. They have a new album coming out, Requiem, in February. Jonathan Davis got COVID bad to the point where he had to sit, perform sitting down on that tour. Along with that, Korn's Fieldy, longtime bassist, who is a big part for Korn's signature sound, is had to take time off to take care of his own health and personal uh, issues. With the band's blessing, they want him to come back too. Korn had a rough year, and I really hope they can pull through. New album's coming out. We already got Start the Healing, which is doing well, getting air- airplay. People are enjoying it fine. Korn fans will be happy. Other artists we love, I can't even, we're not going to be able to keep up with how many artists got, uh, caught COVID. Corey Taylor caught it. He turned out to be just fine. He was vaccinated, but he even said he was the sickest he had ever been when he got it for that 72 hour period. Like Gretchen says, wash your hands, wear a mask, get vaccinated if you can. So I did not hear the new Love and Death album, unfortunately. I do want to hear that though for what had, uh, for Brian Welch did and things like that. We also have other cool stuff that happened. You know, we got to see more breakout names finally come out and make more of a stand. Bands and names like Spirit Box really living up to the hype. And they had a lot of high expectations from many people after all the singles they put out. Eternal Blue delivered. Totally delivered. And I think that's awesome. Good for them. Good for Courtney and Justin. Good for the band. I think they are going to take it by storm in 2022. I, from what I understand, that tour is supposed to still happen with Under Oath, Every Time I Die, Spirit Box. Although Every Time I Die is still kind of in flux with everything going on there. I don't know. But I hope that tour still happens and I hope everything still goes to plan. And I think Spirit Box definitely has something great. And I want to see what they do in 2022 now. I hope they don't slow down. I hope this album continues to push them because Eternal Blue made a lot of people happy in the rock and metal community, a lot. And I think that's awesome. Another one, Poppy, did not slow down in 2022. Even though she couldn't perform, she tried to do her own tour. That didn't happen either. But she said, well, I'm not sitting around doing nothing. I'm going to release two EPs, do another graphic novel. I refuse to stay silent. And both EPs were killer. I loved Eat. Flux was a lot of fun. Poppy's still bringing it at a young age and like very like and still not a ton of experience. She's still has so much potential, guys, that from what I understand, she will not be on that Deftones Gojira Poppy tour that was originally scheduled for 2020, then 2021. Deftones and Gojira still are hopeful for 2022. I don't know if that's going to happen. I hope it is. That's a killer lineup. You know, I love both bands. We'll have to wait and see. I do hope we find that out, though, because that's awesome. Poppy's doing great. We also saw, arguably, this goes in the worst category of best and worst of 2021. This was the first year I was not able to go to Welcome to Rockville since 2013. And it hurt, but I, it's for obvious reasons. You know, we had to get stuff done. And I'm hopeful to go to 2022. I will do everything I can to go in 2022 if I'm invited to work it and be a photographer I do media stuff. And yeah, I'm kind of glad this is the year I wasn't there because I probably would have shot, tried to shoot Brass Against. And I would have been, uh, as a photographer, I could have been in the splash zone. 
Boy, I hate to use that analogy, but that's exactly what it is. This made national headline news, front page, and all the monologues for like the Late Show with Stephen Colbert and stuff like that. Raskin Singer got caught up in the moment, as was said by the band, and relieved herself on a willing participant fan who was very inebriated. The fan went back into the crowd. Man, oh man. Someone said splish splash in the chat. Uh, as Gretchen said, after she found out everything too, and a great friend of mine uh, that also was working the festival said the same thing, like uh, in the same vein, she really had to go. It was a lot. So, man, oh man, that was, that was something, guys. That was something. Of all the things, it kind of sucks too because Rockville had a good lineup. Great new location for in Daytona at the uh, Speedway. Yeah, that's not the, uh, not the way you want to get your festival noticed, though. And of course, it's in Florida. Because, of course, that's going to have to happen in Florida. Splash against... Okay, that's a little funny. I'm surprised I actually haven't heard that one before. Splash against... <laughs> gets a little bit of a knock. Splash against... Okay. Oh, there goes my camera. Whoop. Sorry, I have a new standing desk, and I'm trying to configure everything. The little bolts I have is not super tight right now. There we go. We'll leave it that way for now. Oh, yeah. It was something, though, guys. It was a crazy year, peeing in the name of. Oh, yeah. They'll never outlive it, either. That's what you're known for. And there's, as far as I know, as long as Tool is still going on tour in 2022 in Europe, Brass Against is supposed to open for Tool in Europe. That's a huge gig. That's a huge landing spot for what you can do. Maynard probably thinks it's funny, let's be honest, but it's all going to depend if international travel and touring can still happen and things like that. We don't know. Uh, there was just, man, oh man, a lot happened in 2021. And we, I, I, these aren't even just highlights, lowlights, whatever you want to see them as. So much happened. There was a lot of good music, a lot of bad music, obviously. A lot of good notes. One thing that I'm very happy about, we tried to see how we can make touring happen again for live music. A lot of venues demanding vaccination checks or 72 hour uh, tests. And some venues refusing to do that and some bands not wanting to have anything to do with that. And some bands only wanted to do that. Foo Fighters flat out saying, if this venue doesn't check for vaccination status, we're not playing it. Fair. And oh man. Who was it? Ah, uh, man, I'm drawing a blank now, and I apologize. Eric Clapton, that's who it was, said the opposite, made a big stand. If I have to play at a, va a venue that demands vaccination status to get in, I'm not going to play it. Several months later, he really reneged on that and decided to play. Another one. He's not, Eric Clapton wasn't even like raging against the liberal machine. He was just complaining about not being able to do stuff. And yeah, that, ugh, yeah. Come on, man. You know better than that. Ugh. There are so many people that are not able. Bands, artists, uh, crews. I, like how many people it really takes to run live touring. Technicians, drivers, things like that. Managers. And these are the people that can't tour either. It's not just the band. They're trying to make things work. And then you have Eric Clapton sitting in his mansion going, Ugh, I can't play the venues I want to play at. Get out of here. Ugh. Uh, I don't know. There's so much that happened this year. There's, so, there's just so much to take in that there's no way we're ever going to be able to cover it. And that's what kind of sucks. But at the same time, there's a lot of stuff to look forward to. I know, as for me, I'm looking forward to things in 2022. New albums coming out, potential festivals, potential tours. Potential new stuff. So in the chat, uh, for festivals, uh, yeah, that's a good point too. There were festivals that did happen that worked well. Welcome to Rockville went off without the brass against, splash against. Went out for you without a hitch. UWP had a good, did a good job trying to protect people as they could, best they could. The Florida was a little bit rougher because it's Florida, but still trying to make sure that other festivals happened the best they could. 
Blue Ridge Rock Fest, independent festival in the United States, did not go as well the first time they're doing something that's big. I stand by, I'll make this statement right now. Um, when I did my live stream right after getting home from that, one, I was way off on the ticket pricing for that because I didn't pay for a ticket, so that's it. Two, the last two days were better than the first two days when they ch changed up the security teams, even though it wasn't good, but it was still better. That being said, yeah, Blue Ridge Rock Fest was the worst festival I've ever seen in my life. And I do know what I'm talking about. I've been to many, many, many of them. Worked many of them. Lived, like, I've been to festivals where I was there before the gates opened up and stayed after the gates of the park closed. Man, oh man, that was rough. And I do, I don't care what the lineup is next year. I can't go. Not a chance. I, how dangerous it was for so many people and how brutal it was. Which sucks because the bands there were really good. Even bands I don't care for had great performances. And the fans there were there for the right reasons. And just the infrastructure and setting and how security was run or not run was so brutal that it marred any potential for fun and <laughs> a good environment. And that's what kind of sucks. There really was just... Uh, at least it was an Altamont or Woodstock 99. No, it was not either of those. There were a lot of injuries, but no one died from my in from what I understand, which is good. Thank God. There were hurt people. A lot of hurt and sick people. A lot of hurt people. More hurt people than you'd think. But man, oh man. Ugh. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that uh, at least we know. You learn as you go, you know? There's a reason why DWP, not fest, um, multi-genre festivals like Shaky Knees, Bonnaroo, even the big ones, you know, they have established names for a reason. They know how to handle stuff like that. Yeesh. <laughs> Yowza. They're also not in the middle of nowhere in Southern Virginia, in the hills, in the mountains, that it's impossible to get to for that many people. So, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Rough. Moving on. We saw a lot of weird battles uh, for legal stuff and just petty stuff. Soundguard, the band members trying to go out, like trying to defend themselves against Vicky Cornell over who gets the rights to social media for Soundguard and things like that, which is really just awful stuff that shouldn't have to happen. We saw Courtney Love try to go after Trent Reznor and Dave Grohl again, and that did not go over well. I feel like 2021 also just proved like we're tired of the, ac the aftermath of 2020 and feelings just got stirred up. We're all pent up with all this frustration. And people start lashing out at people they know. That happens to everyone, too. That happens to people at work, you know? You can be best friends at work, but if you're stuck together eight hours a day at a job you don't like, you're going to start to find reasons to fight with each other. That's just how it is. So, yeah. And not to say, Courtney Love, those people aren't working together. But the idea is when you're pent up in frustration for so long, you just start looking for reasons to be upset and complain. Aaron Lewis. So, it's going to be interesting to see what all happens in 2021. So in 2022, or it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in 2022. I'm excited for what happens in 2022 for this, just for the specific reason that I want to see progress for a lot of different things, for bands, artists, labels, you know, I want more touring. I want more online interactive uh, actions between bands. There's so many bands now that have their own Twitch channels. Trivium's killing it on Twitch. There are other bands that are doing really well with that stuff too. And like just like participating more with that and participating more with YouTube channels, you know? It's very weird for me because I liked, I used to love doing interviews. People didn't like watching interviews and I get that now. So I have to be careful with how I do stuff like that going forward to make sure me taking the time of bands and wanting to promote stuff will actually want to be seen by people. So I have to kind of counter that with everything. And then I have my own, like, we all have our own personal goals for everything for 2022. I have stuff that I'm trying to plan out. This is just for the channel for Rocked. I have stuff I want to plan out for YouTube specifically, YouTube first, then Twitch, then just overall goals that are outside of Rocked and everything. YouTube, I want to hit 100,000 next year. I'm at 84,600 right now. I think it's possible. Keep in mind, my growth in 2021 was extremely chaotic and erratic. In March and April of 2021 was the worst my channel had ever grown, ever. Slower than my first year. 
That's how low the algorithm sank me. And the summer, it got built back up slowly. October, the best month I've ever done in my entire career on YouTube. By a long shot. I had over 1.1 million views in a month in October. And then November, it all tanked again. <laughs> now, in November, I know why, though, because one of the videos got flagged for age gate or age inappropriate, and they wouldn't lock it, so I had to remove it. And I'm still trying to get above that now, like try to go past that, but I at least understand why. YouTube is a chaotic random beast. So we're going to find out how I can get to 100,000 sooner than later. Part of the issue is interviews are just not as popular. So if I do interviews, they'll be put on the podcast channel. They'll be done in audio form as, or they'll be, and they'll be put on Spotify and things like that too. Not saying I'm not doing them. I'm just saying I'll have to do this carefully. I want to do more videos like think pieces that actually get people's attention and people might want to see, you know? I want to do more list videos because that's what people like to watch on YouTube. And I get that. I'm, I'm totally fine for doing that. I'm always up for suggestions as well for the next list video, whether that's top 10, best, worst, or just list of things in general. Then we get to album reviews. That was the first thing I ever started doing on the channel. When I first started writing for a website and started doing videos for a website and started growing from there. Like these like websites don't even exist anymore. Then started picked up by other websites and things like that. Because album reviews do not get nearly the views that other ones do. Other videos do, not by a long shot. It could be a big name too, and it won't get close to a list video or a long think piece video or something like that. It's kind of a bummer. It's just a sign of the times though. I can do something very cool and like a think piece and like have people think about it. The thing is though with album reviews, they're very timely. They become dated pretty quick. And I, my, if my channel was way up there in subs, like if I had half a million subs and I could do album reviews and still make, make it worth the time. Yeah, I get it. But uh, right now it's not. And that's not to say I'll never do them again. No. Like if a big name comes out with a new album, I'll do it. Metallica comes out with a new album 2022. I'll review it. If MGK makes good to his threat for Boy With Horns and it is one of the worst things ever, I'll do it just to warn people. So. Best worst concert experiences I've had? Well, um, I would do that for a podcast special sometimes. I don't know if I'd make that for a video. I've seen, I have seen some stuff. I, <laughs> I have seen some things. Oh man, that's a episode for another day. But yes, that is a great suggestion. That'll be covered on another podcast episode or something or however, whatever that is. So minimal changes for the Rocked YouTube channel. I just have to think of things, strategize, plan things out. Because what's crazy about it I could put like a good interview with someone barely and it still would not get it more views than a 15 second TikTok that I upload as a YouTube short. So the time and effort to do these things has to play into effect as well. So other things for YouTube as well. I'm always going to be looking for things. Rock Coliseum is not going anywhere. We might be trying to improve Rock Coliseum, the four of us. We have hoping to have one uh in january end of january beginning of february rough date don't hard set anything for that yet but rock coliseum is still going to be a thing for sure on youtube on the main channel we love doing it we're going to try to make it as cool as we can we want to try to get that to a bigger audience as well live stuff though here on twitch a little bit of change-ups one podcast will still be on here two new music night when that comes back at the beginning of january it's not going to be this sunday i won't be in town this sunday also, not a lot of new music's dropped this Sunday, if you or this week, if you haven't noticed. Uh, when that comes back, though, I might switch over to actually doing music videos. Playing the actual music videos instead of just the Spotify equalizer, or the visualizer. Because I want more people to see it on the front page of Twitch to get more people in. And I might be talking a bit more over some of the songs, just to have for more engagement for people. So it's not just me sitting quietly letting people listen. I want it to be more of an inviting community, more... Less rigid, less a critical and formal, you know, make it more interesting. Another thing I will be doing in 2022 on Twitch for sure, listening parties for full albums when they come out. That should happen in January too. So on Fridays, new music days, when new albums come out, I plan on having times like sometime midday on Fridays to listen to new albums. 
like I know Under Oath has a new album coming out soon in a couple of weeks. That would be a perfect one to test out for new music uh, or for a listening party. And I'll try to find two albums, make it a two hour stream. And I definitely want to do that with everybody. So these are stream ideas. I still want to play games and stuff on Twitch too, but it's been apparently obvious that unless I'm playing with someone else, nobody wants to watch me game on Twitch. And that's, that's what is what it is. I, I get my audience does not care for me doing that stuff. So I'm trying to find things that my audience would be interested in. So here's hoping I can find that. I have plans. I know I get bummed out. I get inflated. I get excited. I get depressed about the ups and downs of YouTube growth and Twitch numbers, as does most, as do most content creators. Right now is the best time I can do to strategize everything. So here's my goal. Here's my hope. 2022, I hit 100,000 on YouTube. That first and foremost. After that, I can focus on other stuff and continue and like settle down a little bit, you know, the weight will be taken off my shoulders. 2022 is going to be a busy year for me as well. For those who are not aware, Gretchen and I are engaged. We'll be getting married. That is awesome. I will be graduating and finish with my master's in by the end of 2022. I'm hoping to travel a little bit in 2022. I will be moving in 2022. So there's a lot of stuff I have to do, but that'll come in time. And that's stuff I can plan out in advance. It'll be a chaotic year, but it's worth it. So as I started out this stream, I just want to say thank you guys so much for listening in throughout this chaotic, wild year where we all had stuff to complain about and we all had our own priorities and obligations. A lot of you still made time for me, whether I was just watching a video, listening to a podcast, seeing me live on Twitch, whatever it might be. It's not gone unnoticed, and I am thankful. That being said, like I said in the beginning of this episode, no matter what you have Whatever you are looking forward to, whatever you're hoping to aspire, hoping to accomplish in 2022, I hope you can stick to those goals and I hope you can make them. 2022 is going to be a long year, probably like this year, but it could be better. Things can improve. So that being said, thank you guys again. If Gretchen were here, she would tell you guys thank you very much. If my friends were here, I would tell you thank you very much as well, guys from the Rock Coliseum, people on YouTube, things like that. We have plenty of stuff coming. We're not slowing down. We're just trying to figure out how we can go faster. And sometimes that takes us to shift gears a little bit. Thank you guys so much. I will see you all hopefully next Tuesday in the beginning of 2022. Is that right? Is that how math works? Yeah, that's how math works. The first Tuesday of 2022. Hopefully you guys do great. Hope you guys have a great new year. Hope you guys have a lot of fun with the rest of this break. That being said, ah, word of wisdom to close out everything. How do I close this one out? What's a good way to close out this episode? Huh. I don't know. Outside of the standard, wash your hands, wear a mask, get vaccinated. <laughs> okay, you know what? A challenge for everyone. In 2022, to everyone listening to this one, I challenge everyone to pre-order one album. Just one of a band that you love for they have an album coming out in 2022 to pre-order at least one. Have faith in a band and pre-order their album. No matter what it is, just do it once. That's it. It could be any time, any album, 2022. Pre-order it. Give that band a little hope. Let's see how that works. That being said, thank you guys so much. Have a great night. Have a great day. Wherever you are, stay safe. We will see you next year. Haha, <laughs> get it? Because it's only in a couple days. Oh, that lame dad joke. Thank you guys again. Have a great night.